Hello everyone, this is Raven Maddock from Chrysalis Studios, and we're kind of picking up where we left off with the last videos. Um, I've been kind of AWOL for almost exactly a year. Um, I've had some medical stuff. I had uh, breast cancer and went through surgery and chemo and all that stuff. Came out on the other side and am now getting back at it. And just in time for ICE again. So that's the International Customizing Equine Event. I have a different model. Um, the other one had a little bit more work done to her, but she's not kind of... I had done stuff between now and then that didn't get videoed, so we'll start off kind of where she left off. Um... So next thing I needed to show you guys would be how to fill in spaces. So this guy still needs his legs repositioned. They've been cut. Um, the one back one really drastically just because that's how that had to work. Um, I've freed him up in all of his joints so that the back end can move like it needs to move in the reference photo. And that is his reference photo in the back there. So I'll show you how to reposition his neck because what's going to have to happen with this guy is because he's on the two legs, I'm going to actually have to um, put pegs into him, which will be a good thing for you guys to be shown how to do. Um, so it's not a bad thing. It'll just be a little bit different from the lying down horse. So for him, um, what I've done is I've laid a wire. And so that was done with um, an aluminum wire so that I can actually bend it. Um, aluminum's fairly bendy. And it's stuck in there with super glue and baking soda. Now we touched on that before, but we never actually did anything with it. Um, I've stuck, you can see in the head there, stuck the wire in there. Basically all I do is lay it against a flat surface and then I'll use my super glue. And I use either Crazy Glue brand um, or I'll use, this is fairly new to me, the Glue Masters Medium Instant Glue. Um, this is probably the cyanoacrylate is the proper name for it. A lot of the places have been messing with the concentration and the formula, uh, so it doesn't necessarily react with baking soda as well as it used to. Um, crazy Glue still works. Don't get the gel. The gel does not work. Um, this stuff will. So what I'll do is I will put the wire in there on a flat surface. So this would obviously not be connected to the body. I do normally the head first because it's easier to manage separately. I'd hold the wire, add the glue, make sure you don't get any on yourself, and then sprinkle on my baking soda. That goes right in there. Then I'll put more glue, more baking soda until it's stuck in there. And won't come off. It actually is a really, really hard bond um, that'll hold through pretty much anything. Um, and I've done the same inside the body cavity here. You can see that I've picked a flat area to lay it on and I'll either do it on the back right through here so the wire would go right under here against this backbone or to the belly depending on where things are going and what's easiest. For gravity purposes, it's usually easier to put it on that belly if you can. Um, so I just lay it down again. I would put the glue on it, then a layer of baking soda, then more glue, then more baking soda. And as you put baking soda on it, you can just uh, blow it out and then that'll keep it going. You do need to, if it's against plastic like that, support things when you're moving things. Um, just because it might not, it might pick it up and lift it. So I would use this wire and I usually make it extra long because I can always snake it back on itself. If it's too, it's maybe a little bit too short. Um, if it's too long, I can snake it back on itself. But if it's too short, I'm kind of hooped and I'm going to have to pull all that wire out and go again, which I don't really want to have to do. So all I do to support it is just kind of hold the wire in two spots and then bend like that just so that it won't come out. Sometimes it'll pop off if it's just against that plastic bear like that. So then I play with it, try and get it in the right spot. So the guy that I'm using as a reference, his head, kind of look at the angle of it. It's about, not quite a 45, um, but you're kind of looking in about that area. It doesn't really matter what this wire is doing at all. As long as that wire stays within the outside line of the neck and the inside line of the neck. So you can see that he would be. And then I look at the reference of where that shoulder is. 
to where that neck starts, where that shoulder is, to where that neck or the cheek starts. So he's actually pretty close. Um, and then I'll look at where that chin is. So you can see where the reference's chin is in regards to its shoulder. It's kind of in line with that. So we have chin, shoulder. So I'm about in the right spot. Once I get in the right spot, I just take your normal household tin foil and I start stuffing it in the body cavity. You don't have to fill the body cavity by any stretch of the imagination. All I'm looking to do is just bulk out this neck. And all this is doing for me is giving me something to build on with my epoxy. It also keeps it a little bit lighter than it being solid epoxy, because epoxy is super heavy. And especially if you're doing a model that might become unbalanced, if your neck is all solid epoxy, say all I did to this guy was a huge section of neck and a huge section of mane in his face and I left his butt, he's gonna tip. So you wanna kinda balance things out. I know I'm doing tons of epoxy work in that back end to move everything where it needs to go. There'll be a lot up front and it should balance out. Plus he's getting pegs in those two balancing legs so it won't matter kinda at the end of the day anyways. So um, I would actually, with the um, tin foil base, err on the side of not big enough. You want it to kinda suit the shape, but you want to leave room so you can build the epoxy on top. And the last thing that you guys want is to be running into this stuff when you're sculpting. If I'm trying to put a muscle in here and this sticks out too far, then all I'm going to run into is this underneath. And then you're going to have a hole and you're going to have to poke it in and it's going to be a pain in the butt. And this is when models get tossed across the room. I know because I've done it. And so I would make it a little bit smaller than you think you need, just so you can build on top of it and then squish it down. So when you're thinking about a horse's neck in particular, um, the top ridge is actually not very thick. I'll bring my reference out here for you. So you can see how this part's really thin. It gets thinner towards the pole, a little bit thicker towards where it starts in the neck, but all that top line where their mane comes out of is actually fairly thin. And then you get it thicker behind the ears and then thicker at the base of the neck. So if you think about um, a draft horse collar, it's kind of like a triangular shape. So something, oh, it's a good shape. Something kind of like this. So if you think about how they have to put a draft collar on, they have to slip it over the horse's head this way so it clears the head and the atlas and axis bones right here that make this really nice and wide. There's actually bone that you can feel on either side and you can see it right here. So that's what they're trying to clear is the skull and this bone. So they flip it, put it over the head like this with the wide part at the top and then they have to flip it around because the wide part goes at the bottom because the neck at the bottom is the widest part. So you can kind of sort of see it here. Um, it's thinner back behind here than it is up front. So you want to think about those shapes and they're kind of like a, um, almost like a, a triangle shape. So up here it goes thick to thin, down here it goes thin to thick. So keep that in mind and then with a tiny little ridge at the top that's kind of on the thinner end. So I'd keep this part here really thin, leave this part a little bit thicker. It's usually just about as wide as that head. So you can see it in the bones there, how this part right here. It's almost as wide as where his head is. And then down here, I would push it in a little bit here because you'll end up building an epoxy in here and it, it will do what it needs to do. So I'm still maybe needing to go a little bit down. He'll get a lot of bulk built on top too. I'm gonna add to that top line a bit just so that he matches that reference. Um, and then keep your throat latch thinner because you're gonna wanna not run into that tin foil. So it might look a little funky when you're starting it, but I'd rather it look funky here than running into problems later. And that was something I did for years and years and years because I wanted this to look perfect. I'd work on it for hours, put the epoxy over top. The epoxy gets thicker and thicker as you add layers. And then you're just dremeling everything down and starting again anyways. So save yourself some time. If you want to learn for yourself, go for it, but don't cry later. 
<laughs> and go, Raven, why did you not tell me? Because I just told you, do not build it too high. And you can, if you want, um, at this stage, poke wires in here if you want a crazy flying mane. Um, I'll go over that another day. This guy obviously doesn't have that. Um, and then solidify it in there. The best way to actually lay those wires would be to lay the wires and then put your first layer of epoxy on. So at this point, I can actually put a layer of epoxy on this. Just a thin, thin layer to support it. It is pretty stable. Um, and that's all what, what we're going for with putting the tin foil down is just something stable to build off of so that when you're laying the epoxy and mixing it in, it's not actually going to go and get mushy anywhere on you. Um, so that'll be the next step for this guy is now that we have that top line built on his neck, then I can go in and add some epoxy. So I'll see you in the next video. Happy customizing.